In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating animations in Flash CS 5.5. And you're going to need the exercise files from the last tutorial in order to complete this successfully. So first of all, we're going to look at using the timeline in Flash. So at the moment, we've got all of our layers on one frame, frame number one. So first of all, we're going to create um, a number of frames between frame 1 and frame 90 and to do that we're literally going to go to frame 90 and click on one of the frames there and insert a blank frame. You can do this by clicking the right click or on a Mac control and click and selecting insert frame from the drop down menu. Go back to frame 1 and press enter to get the playhead to move and we can see the playhead is scrubbing through the entire 90 frames. Nothing's actually happening yet because we haven't animated anything. But we can see that Flash animates from frame 1 to frame 90. Press Control and Enter to see the movie in action. And if you open the bandwidth profiler, you can also see the timeline, the playhead scrubbing through the timeline. If you hold down Shift and select frame 90 in all of the layers, and then insert a blank frame there it's going to uh, create the animation from frame 1 to 90 on all of the layers okay if you select the replay button and move it to frame 90 this means that this particular image won't appear until frame 90 as you can see on that layer all of the frames before frame 90 turn white which means that for all intents and purposes, the replay button doesn't exist until the playhead reaches frame number 90. We can also stagger out the remaining content, for example, the tree, the text, the black rectangle, and I'm going to move each of these to frame number 25, frame 50, and frame 75, respectively, so that we're staggering out the content, leaving a bit of space between each each thing before it uh, appears on the screen. Now if we test a movie by pressing Command Enter or Control Enter on a PC we can see that the various elements don't show up initially but uh, as soon as the playhead hits their frame number 25, 50, 75, 90 it's going to in introduce each of those elements one by one over time. Now if we go back to frame number one what I'm going to do is take the logo and make it larger in frame number one so that it begins in the middle of the screen much bigger and then eventually ends up in its original position in the top right of the screen. So if we go to frame 70 uh, and insert a keyframe, we can make sure that the logo is smaller from here by inserting a keyframe and then making it smaller using the free transform tool. So what's going to happen uh, if at the moment is that it's going to appear for 70 frames as large and then become small again. I only want it to appear large for one second so if I put a, a blank keyframe in frame number 25 then what's going to happen is the space between frame 25 and frame 70 disappears and the image also disappears for that period of time. If I click and drag and select frame 25 to 35 in all of the layers and right click or control click on a Mac and choose insert frame from the drop down menu I can add blank frames if I need to extend my timeline for my animation or I can easily remove frames in the same way select the frames and then from the drop down menu select remove frames and then they're removed from the timeline I can also move the foreground image to frame 25 as well just to stagger that out for my next part of my animation. So the next part is to make an object move using Flash's animation technique which is known as tweening and this kind of is abbreviation for in between which means that Flash works out the animation in between two points a basic definition would be moving an object between one point and another and to elaborate on that you basically tell Flash the beginning point and the end point of your animation and it works out the rest for you. 
So, rule number one of tweening is each animated graphic needs to be on its own layer. If you have more than one object on a layer and try to animate it, it's going to cause problems and it won't work correctly. So make sure that your animation object is on a layer on its own. And rule number two is that if you want to animate any object in Flash, in most cases you're going to want to turn it into a symbol, for example, a movie clip. So make sure that all of your animated objects are symbols before you try to animate them. So we're going to put a keyframe in frame number 24 of the background layer and we're going to move it to the left. And we're going to put a classic tween on frame 1. So we're just basically animating the position here. We, we can animate anything that appears in the properties panel can be animated but in our case we're just working on the position of these of this object if we right click on the foreground and then use a motion tween the foreground layer you can go to the end point and basically move your object and flash works out the rest so motion tweening is a new feature since CS4 which uh, is even easier than classic tweening. You don't even have to set the keyframe for the start and the end point. You just tell it that you want the layer to be a motion tween and then select the end point and move your object or adjust one of the properties and Flash works out everything else for you. You can manipulate the motion as well once you've created a motion tween by editing the motion path directly on the stage by selecting it and then dragging the start point and the end point or moving it around and you can use motion tween on the logo layer to move to the left for point B. Next we're going to be looking at fine tuning animation for to create realistic depth and simulate real world effects. So at the moment the background is moving more quickly than the foreground so what we need to do is reverse this because in reality the background would be moving more slowly than the foreground. So we're going to slow down the animation of the background for more realistic motion. In the last keyframe of the background layer we're also going to select um, the blur property and we're going to add a 15 pixel blur so that when the background comes to a stop it's going to be 15 pixels blurry. We can also reverse this process with the foreground image on the foreground layer and what we're going to do is start it off blurry and animate it so that by the time it reaches its end point it's completely clear or non-blurry. And You can do that simply with a motion tween or using the classic tween and adjusting the blur property at the start and the end point. Okay, select the foreground tween and in the properties we're going to do an ease out to 100%. And we're also going to do this, ease out the foreground and the background to 100% in the properties panel. This means that it's going to gradually ease out um, and create a more realistic motion in our animation. So next we're going to make the logo itself fade out by applying a color effect which is the alpha transparency. So select your final keyframe for the logo and in the properties panel under color effect choose alpha and set it to 0% and that will make your logo fade out to transparency. Next I'm going to add a motion tween for the bar itself, the black bar. And I'm going to move it off to the right at the start and gradually move it in as the animation takes place over time. So we're going to add a motion tween next to the text layer and position it at the left of the screen or the stage at the beginning and have it slide in to the right by the time it reaches frame number 80. And last of all we're going to add a drop shadow to the text, blur it slightly and we can test our movie now just to see how it's all looking and these nice visual effects that are very easy to create in Flash add such subtlety and such depth to the animation that you should always try to aim for this sort of um, sophistication in your animations 
Okay, now we've got these three branches on the top left and the bottom right of our image here, and we can use Flash's built-in mask tools to animate these branches so that they look like they're appearing gradually or growing uh, in effect. It's an illusion that's created using the mask and animating the mask layer. So first of all, we're going to need to put both branches on their own layers. And to do this, we can do it very easily in Flash by right-clicking on the layer and selecting from the drop-down menu, Distribute to Layers. And this will automatically transfer all of the symbols on this one layer into each of their own layers, which is exactly what we want. Next, we're going to create a new layer on top of the first tree design, and we're going to call it Mask and we're also going to turn it into a mask layer by right clicking and selecting mask from the drop down menu on the mask layer we're going to select the oval tool and draw an oval of any color um, when you're working with masks you're not actually going to see the image of the mask it becomes transparent but it's a good idea to use something like bright toxic green and to make it 50% alpha transparency because you'll then be able to see through it and distinguish it from any other graphics or images on your stage. So we're going to drag this into the library, convert it to a movie clip, and um, we've already converted this layer to a mask layer. So we're going to unlock the mask layer and create a motion tween on it. We're going to move to frame 60 and make the oval a lot larger so that it basically covers the entire branch that we're trying to animate here. And if we click and drag the keyframe we can make the animation go faster or slower in motion tweens. It's very easy to adjust or modify the settings. Um, we're going to make a mask layer for the other branch as well and follow the same process. Drag out the circle from the library, add a motion tween to our mask layer, make the circle cover the entire branch and obviously convert it into a mask layer. And finally we're going to test our movie and see how it all comes together at the end. And we've got quite a lot of motion here. We've got text coming in from the side, the other the bar coming in from the other side. The tree branches are um, growing into place. And we've got our foreground and our background images pulling focus or giving the illusion that they're pulling focus. And Overall, it's, it's a very nice effect using some simple animation techniques in Flash CS 5.5.